I'm not saying you should do this, but if you wanted to, it would be very easy for you to decompress the majority of your body in a seated position from a chair. Chairs often, you know, if you get the fancy kind, they have these armrests on either side. And when you press down with your arms on the armrest, it lifts the upper part of the body up and leaves the lower part of the body to somewhat hang free. And the weight of the lower body, even as we get into the pelvis and in through the leg, the weight of that will actually pull down. And that pull will gradually, slowly, safely separate things if you do it right. In a weird way, compression is natural to the body. We, we face it every single day because we've got gravity kind of just squashing us down like that all day long. It just, it, it's just doing that. So it's very easy for us to get compressed. And an interesting thing, a good point with that is that we don't have too much opposition to it. We do it in a weird way if you look at the Tensokin model, but a lot of the fibered muscles and ligaments, let's say it's, a, you know, supraspinous I'm drawing now, or even the ones that run between all of the vertebrae, they really, they all cross the joint. They cross it largely vertical. So we don't have a ton resisting us getting pushed together. We do have discs, and those are really, you know, really neat and really important. We do have those discs to try to resist that. But a lot of our other tissues don't do that. A lot of our other soft tissues, the bones, of course, resist it. But they need help. They can't do it all themselves. So getting compressed is easy to do. And when that happens, a couple of things start to happen that, that make us reduce motion overall. For instance, when we get pushed together, say the bones here, these vertebrae, and this could be any joint though, when we go to bend, so we do left or right side bending, we do forward or back bending, what we call flexion and extension. It's kind of like these, these joints are actually closer together than they should be. So when this vertebrae on top tries to come closer to the one lower, it bottoms out too quickly. It's too close together. The joints are touching a little bit earlier. And a lot of times they have fluid between, they don't directly touch, but we lose the tissue or the fluid compressibility before we normally should. So we lose overall motion in that area and probably a number of areas. As well, at the same time, the muscles that are between these, so these would be like the, the muscles being in right here, and then our ligaments, let's say, are these nice tealy colors that I love. The ligaments span between these. When we stop them from moving, when they get into a short position and they stay in a short position, they tend to thicken. They tend to actually accommodate that length. And so they might add extra tissue, making them just a bit more rigid. So we've lost overall joint motion, but we've also lost tissue pliability, ultimately leading to some, some real problems when we want to move this again. This can cause pain. There is direct compression, not so much what we're talking about here. Nerve compression can be a very different thing. But flexibility when it comes to musculoskeletal pain is almost always in the mix. It's almost always part of it. When we don't move well in one place, it throws off another, either by one place working too hard or one place has to move in a different way than it should, causing early wear and tear. So decompressing this, getting it spaced out is actually a really good idea. If we can make some space here, we can have some very beneficial effects. Turns out when you do decompression to these things, those tissues will tend to start to yield. They will actually tend to soften up. Our, our forces will get into this and they will gradually lengthen. If you do it nice and slow, gradual, and that should read gently, if you do it gently enough, what happens is something called myofascial release. There's a neurologic part to it, of course, but we get overall myofascial release when it's sustained. And we can start to space out the joints, the bones, the muscles, the ligaments, and give them back their pliability. They get used to the new length, they get used to the new position, and they tend to stay there, just like it'll stay short when given the chance to be short. So there's a number of benefits, not just movement, but actually the discs require 
decompression. When we're in a compressed state, the fluid of the nucleus pulses, that the gelatinous part of the disc, it actually tends to escape much more rapidly. You lose height during the day. It's a, it's a well-known thing. You need to lay down and decompress the disc, sleep, to get some of that fluid back. But at the same time, if the decompression is never achieved because it's being held in compression by short fibrotic tissues, then it doesn't refill nearly as easily. So if we can get it to decompress, we actually get better fluid flow back into the discs. We get more of a permanent resolution in our depleted discs, if you will. So decompression could be very useful. And again, I'm not saying you should do this. In fact, make sure it's safe to do before you go doing anything related to decompressing yourself or having it done to you. But when we press down in our arms, we can have a, a great effect. And it's, it's easy to achieve. You can do it at home if you want to, if it's the right thing for you. The mechanics are, are pretty, pretty crazy. You know, the whole thing is, is kind of wild if you look at the shoulder girdle. So again, the chair arm rests are sitting right about here. And we're pressing down with our arms into them. And now what actually happens is because we're pressing down with our arms, our scapula, our shoulder girdle, scapula, clavicle, humerus, you could throw in there, all of that is, is essentially being pushed up. It's moving up, but at the same time, we have lots of muscular attachments. So we can throw in the rhomboids easily here to the spine, rhomboids to the spine. And then, of course, we have our good friend, the trapezius, you know, running through vaguely this way. We could also definitely talk about, it's going, we have to go to side view for this one, pec major and pec minor, like that. They're in and about here. And because of the attachments from the arm or shoulder girdle into the thoracic spine and rib cage, that all stays up. That gets pulled up. And so it's as if we're just taking the whole thing and just driving it upwards relative to the lower body. Mechanically, it's, it's a very neat thing because it's not, we get decompression because the lower body is pulling down, but it's because the upper body is pulling away. I know, complicated, right? In any case, the net effect is that our pelvis, it's really at the, at the end point, it is our pelvis. Each successive vertebrae, each successive vertebrae going all the way down here will add a little bit more weight. Every tissue in the front, even our organs and our abdominal muscles, you could say, add some weight to this. But ultimately, our, our pelvis, even in this seated position, will be what drags us down. The legs, to an extent, also have a little bit of weight. Those femurs are big, and they've got, you know, large muscles crossing them, quadriceps and hamstrings. And so because they are in the position that they are, they will also be pulling down too. So we've got a lot of lower body. And this is a similar effect to hanging on a bar. This is a similar effect to hanging upside down. But again, it's a little more readily available than that. And it turns out it's just a real good lesson about decompression.